Welcome to this lesson to help you learn English with the news. We're going to read a news article together, and you're going to learn a lot of advanced vocabulary, complex sentence structure, advanced grammar, and even correct pronunciation directly by reading this article with me. Welcome back to J4's English Training. Of course, I'm Jennifer, and this is your place to become a fluent, confident English speaker. Let's get started. Welcome to our article. We have a very interesting topic. We're talking about Britcoin. That's right, not Bitcoin, but Britcoin. So first, I'm going to read the article in full and you can follow along with my pronunciation. Britcoin could arrive in the second half of the decade. The United Kingdom is pushing ahead with plans to create a digital pound issued by the Bank of England that would offer a stable alternative to Bitcoin or Ether. While cash is here to stay, a digital pound issued and backed by the Bank of England could be a new way to pay that's trusted, accessible, and easy to use, UK Finance Minister Jeremy Hunt said in a statement. The Bank of England and the Treasury said the decision about whether to roll out a digital pound, which has been nicknamed Britcoin, would be made around the middle of the decade. Central banks around the world are considering whether to issue digital currencies as more parts of the economy move online. Unlike cryptocurrencies that are currently available, these coins would have official backing, which would result in a stable value and mean they could be used for everyday spending. Central bank digital currencies could make online spending more convenient, ease cross-border transactions, and boost competition among providers of digital financial assets. In a speech in November, Sir John Cunliffe, Deputy Governor of the Bank of England for Financial Stability, said that without a digital pound, a few big players could dominate and perhaps control innovation in payment services. But major details of digital currency still need to be hashed out. Critics worry that the rollout by central banks could cause enormous disruption if people race to swap cash for a digital alternative. Another fear is privacy, since digital currencies would give governments new insights into how people are spending their money. Now let's look at the article in more detail, and I'll explain some advanced vocabulary and grammar topics. So let's start with our headline. Bitcoin could arrive in the second half of the decade. So the second half of the decade, that would be 2025 or after. So not too long from now, we could have Bitcoin. The United Kingdom is pushing ahead with plans. So to push ahead with something, usually plans or a project or a proposal is another way of just saying advancing with plans, going ahead with plans, proceeding with. So many different ways you could say this. All of them are honestly quite common. One I hear a lot is going ahead with. I probably hear this more than pushing ahead with, but then we also have is proceeding with so our preposition would be with, proceeding with. You don't say proceeding ahead with. In this case, it's just proceeding with. And then a plan, a policy, a change, something like that. So let me give you an example. You could say, my company is pushing ahead with the conference. So notice here, I used a noun. You can push ahead with something specific. So it means they're proceeding with the conference. They're going to have the conference and they're going to create more plans for it. Now, in our example here with plans, plans is a verb. I plan to 
attend the conference. It's a verb, but it can also be a noun. Do you have plans tonight, for example? And in this case, is it a verb or a noun? Pushing ahead with plans. It's a noun. And I know that because grammatically, the sentence requires a noun or a verb, but the verb would be in the gerund form because with is a preposition. So grammatically, this can't be a verb because it would be incorrect. We need the gerund verb. My company is pushing ahead with, and then I could say with planning <laughs> the conference. So I need a gerund verb. Let's continue on. So pushing ahead with plans to create a digital pound issued by the Bank of England that would offer a stable alternative to Bitcoin or Ether. Ether is just another type of cryptocurrency. Okay, let's continue on. This is a quote from the UK finance minister. While cash is here to stay, so if something is here to stay, I think this is probably obvious, but it means it's it's not going to disappear anytime soon. I could say working from home is here to stay. At the beginning of the pandemic, everybody thought that working from home was going to be temporary, but now it's here to stay. Maybe not 100% of the time, but it's definitely changed the way that people work. So it's a great expression to have in your vocabulary. I think you'll use it a lot. And notice you need the verb to be with the expression, to be here to stay. While cash is here to stay, a digital pound issued and backed by the Bank of England to be backed by just means that the Bank of England supports it. The Bank of England is responsible for it. That's backed by. Backed by the Bank of England could be a new way to pay that's trusted and is trusted because it's backed by the Bank of England. Trusted, accessible. Accessible means it's available to many, many, many people. So widely available and easy to use. UK finance minister said in a statement. The Bank of England and the Treasury said the decision about whether to roll out a digital pound to roll out. This is a phrasal verb. We have our verb and a preposition. And this is when you introduce, a, introduce something, when you make something available. So to roll out, to make something available. And that something is usually a service or a product. So in this case, the digital pound, that would be a product and you're making it available. You're introducing it for the first time. You're making it available for the first time, which is where the introduce it comes from. Let me give you another example. This is commonly used by the government when they introduce a new policy or regulation. You could say they rolled out. So our government just rolled out a new tax incentive. They introduced it for the first time. And roll, of course, is our verb. So you need to conjugate that verb here. It's in the past simple. Okay, which has been nicknamed <laughs> Britcoin. So this isn't the official name. I know that because they use a nickname. A nickname is an alternative name. So my name is Jennifer. My family calls me Jenny. <laughs> so that could be my nickname is Jenny, but it's not my official name. So an alternative name, an alternative name for someone or something. 
And we use this a lot with people we have a close relationship with, your family, your significant other, your friends. You probably call them a nickname more than their real name. So what's your nickname? Do you have a nickname? <laughs> Share in the comments below. And just so you know, I don't actually like the name Jenny. I tolerate my family calling me Jenny, but I actually don't like that name. <laughs> so don't call me it. All right, let's continue on, which has been nicknamed Brickcoin. So again, not the official name, but it's possible they do take that as the official name would be made around the middle of the decade. Central banks around the world are considering whether to issue digital currencies as more parts of the economy move online. All right, so right now they're just considering it. They're deciding if we should do it. So of course, this is an excellent time to use our present continuous because it's taking place right now. Right now, they're considering whether to do this. So maybe your country is having the same conversation as well about having a digital currency that's going to be backed by your government or your central bank. Remember, backed by is supported by. Unlike cryptocurrencies that are currently available, these coins would have official backing. We already talked about that to be backed by, to have official backing which would result in a stable value and mean they could be used for everyday spending. Let's talk about starting a sentence with unlike because this is a great sentence structure to have in your vocabulary. I could say unlike the United States, Canada has free health care. So this is a way of saying Canada has free health care. Okay, so that part does not change, but the U.S. doesn't. So these two sentences mean the same thing. Now, I could reverse this and I could say the U.S. doesn't have free health care but Canada does. I could also say that just as an alternative, they mean the exact same thing. But I like starting with unlike because notice it's the most concise, which means the shortest out of all options. So when you use this, you can use less words, but communicate the exact same message, which is always preferred. And this is a great way. But remember, when you use this, unlike the U.S., you're saying the U.S. does not have or does not do whatever your second sentence is. So remember, the Brit coin would have official banking, but other cryptocurrencies don't because they used unlike. So that's a really great sentence structure. I encourage you to practice that. Now, the result of that is they'll have a stable value because it's backed by the Bank of England and they could be used for everyday spending. Let's talk about every day. Now, notice it's one word as one word. It's an adjective adjective and it means common or typical. So common spending, what would that be? Things like things you buy every day, like gas, groceries, expenses for your kids. Those are everyday spending, your mortgage, your cell phone bill, things like that. Everyday spending. Now compare that to our adverb of frequency, which would be I buy <laughs> milk every day, every day. This as an adverb of frequency means seven days a week, right? Every day. That's a lot of milk. I don't know what you're doing with all that milk. I buy milk every day. 
Milk is an everyday purchase. So here, in this case, because it's one word, I know that this is the adjective. It describes purchase, and it just means typical or common. Let's continue on. Central bank digital currencies could make online spending more convenient, ease cross-border transactions. So cross-border would be from Canada to the U.S., U.S. to Mexico, Mexico to France. That's cross-border. And personally, I think that is the best advantage of cryptocurrencies is the cross-border transactions. What about you? And boost competition. Boost is another way of saying increase. It's a very common way of saying increase. Increase competition among providers of digital financial assets. So these are all the advantages of cryptocurrencies, digital currencies. Let's continue on. In a speech in November, Sir John Cunliffe Deputy Governor of the Bank of England for Financial Stability said that without a digital pound, a few big players could dominate and perhaps control innovation in payment services. So this just talks about his point here about having competition. And remember, increasing competition, that's one of the benefits of having a bank digital currency, a digital currency backed by the bank. Let's take a look, said that without a digital pound. Now notice our sentence structure because we have without and then we have a noun, which is great. That's very common. You can also have without and then a verb, but you would need a gerund verb because without is a preposition. So I could say the exact same thing but I need a verb instead of a noun. So I could simply say, said that without having a digital pound. That could be an easy verb to add there. Without having a digital pound. Just remember, without is a preposition. So if you have a verb, it needs to be the gerund verb, which is verb plus ing. A few big players could dominate and perhaps control innovation in payment services. So a payment service, service is just how you pay. Credit card, debit card, PayPal, cryptocurrency, those are all payment services. And our last paragraph. But major details of digital currencies still need to be hashed out. This is a great phrasal verb. When you hash something out, you discuss the details of the plan. So let's say we want to have a, a conference, okay? But we need to hash it out. When is it going to take place? Who are the speakers going to be? Who is going to attend? How many people will attend? What will the price be? So those are all the details you need to make decisions on. So the process of making those decisions, the conversations back and forth, that is hash out, to hash out. So to hash out, this is a phrasal verb, to hash something out, the something is the details, and this is to decide on the details of a plan, a project, or a proposal. Now you could do this when you're planning a vacation. So you can use this in an everyday context, everyday context. So a typical, a normal context, such as planning a vacation. You need to hash out where you're going to stay, your itinerary and your travel arrangements and everything else. So let's say you are planning a vacation with your family. You could say, let's meet tonight and hash out the details. Now notice here that the sentence is in the passive form, to be hashed out. So let's use an example and combine it with a, another phrasal verb we learned, to roll out, which means to introduce 
to make available for the first time. So the government is rolling out a new tax incentive, but the specific details need to be hashed out. Okay. The details need to be hashed out. This is still the passive sentence. If it were an active sentence, it would be the government is hashing out the details. So let me write that. The government is hashing out the present continuous because it's taking place now. The government is hashing out the details for its new tax incentive. Now, hopefully you would hash out the details before you roll something out, but this is just an example to use both of the phrasal verbs in one sentence. Okay, critics, so people who don't think there should be a digital currency backed by the central bank, the Bitcoin. the critics worry that their rollout. So notice here, it's the same meaning, but it's a noun. And I know it's a noun because it's there for one. You possess something. You don't possess a verb. So I have my possessive and the spelling as well. It's one word. So I know this is a noun and it's Similar to saying their introduction, how I could use introduce as a verb or a noun. So this is a noun. Their rollout by central banks could cause enormous disruption if people race to swap cash for digital alternatives, for a digital alternative. Okay, to swap. So I have cash and this is the cryptocurrency. I'm going to swap. So I'm going to give you cash and then get a digital currency. I'm going to swap them. That's what it means. So it's when you replace one thing for another thing. I might say, <laughs> just a silly example, I have this blue pen. I want to swap it for this pink pen. So I'm going to replace my blue pen with my pink pen. That is to swap, to swap. Let me write that definition to replace one thing with another. And in this case, cash and digital currency. Now to race, it means that just, well, you know what a race is. You go really fast, right? So once this digital currency is available, lots of people might say, I want it. I want it. And then they're going to swap their cash. That's what they think could happen. And that will cause disruption. Disruption is a negative thing. It's when everything is going smoothly, but then there's some sort of issue that causes problems. And that could happen if people race to swap it. So race to. This means to move very quickly. Move quickly to achieve something. Now you might say just to use race to, the government is racing to roll out their new tax incentive. So maybe they're trying to do this very, very quickly. Maybe they have a deadline. They publicly announce that it has to be done by the end of the week. So now they're racing to do it. They're moving very quickly to accomplish it, to achieve it. Another fear is privacy. Since digital currencies would give governments new insights into how people are spending their money. So this talked about some of the potential drawbacks, the negatives of the cryptocurrency. And that is the end of our article. So what do you think? If there was a government backed cryptocurrency, digital currency available in your city, your country, would you be interested in it? 
I think I definitely would. And mainly for the reason of cross-border transactions, I think it would make it so much easier. So feel free to share your comments on the topic as well. Amazing job with this lesson. Now you can look in the description or look in the comment section below to find the link where you can download the free lesson PDF that summarizes everything we learned in this lesson. And if you found this lesson helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to help you speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying.